Good afternoon, everybody. It is Wednesday, which means we're going to try another episode of What's Up Wednesday, a new series for us where I kind of tell you what's going on in the firearms community and industry. My name is Dave Tim from Guns and Tactics. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes of your day checking out this video. If you like the content, please like, share, subscribe. If you want to support the channel, the best way is through our Patreon network. Link in the comment description below. So what is new with the industry? Well, more news about legal stuff, about the ATF. Now, I don't have a ton of info. There's other channels that are reporting the ATF is now going door to door. Uh, regarding solvent traps and forced reset triggers, uh, basically asking people to voluntarily turn it over. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to give you any legal advice. Uh, likewise, anybody on the internet who even is a lawyer, you don't have them on retainer, so they're not giving you legal advice either. So just please, please, please use caution no matter where you're getting your information, regardless of the information they are giving you. But basically what we're being told is, most customers seem to have a common denominator of they purchased certain items from a, a gun broker seller. Now, the rumors out there are that it was a controlled undercover operation by the ATF that they actually made this gun broker account, and then thus they knew all of these, or maybe they put pressure on this particular gun broker seller to disclose their lists, whatever it might be. But basically, you have ATF agents that are going to some of these houses saying, hey, you bought a solvent trap, we know what it is, uh, either give it to us or we're going to federally prosecute you. Now, keep in mind, the definition of a suppressor is not a solvent trap. Now, are some people purchasing solvent traps to form one them into suppressors? Probably, yep. Uh, are some people purchasing them to kind of wait and see? Maybe, I don't know. Are some people purchasing them with other things? Again, I don't know. All of my suppressors are actual legit suppressors on ATF Form 3s and 4s and you know all sorts of stuff like that. Now, it's up to you, but I would love to hear if anybody has more firsthand knowledge, maybe you know your thoughts on the matter or whatever, but we'll be following this and I'll probably do a more focused video on some of this. And as we see more of the forced reset trigger stuff come up in more news, as the lawsuits continue on the patent violations and stuff, uh, as well as what the ATF actually determines them to be. Now, as far as other stuff going on, uh, basically, we are seeing some more with that ATF rule change as far as privately made firearms, which we talked about in last week's What's Up Wednesday. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. And then other news regarding that is that UPS is now requiring uh, basically shippers and dealers to have a separate UPS shipping account for firearms, things like that. Now, I don't have a source or a press release from UPS, and I have a UPS account because I have an FFL, and I have not gotten that email, so I don't know if it's buried in my junk folder or what, but supposedly as an FFL, you're supposed to give UPS your FFL and have a separate account for just shipping firearms, including 80% stuff, privately made firearms, whatever, which has to have a serial number, and then a separate account for all your other stuff. So we'll see what happens there with that. So that's a little bit about what's going on. Other industry news, this is some new products coming out. Uh, Primary Arms came out with their new SLX RS10 um, mini reflex sight. They're selling these for 200 bucks, and I gotta say, it looks pretty solid. It kind of looks, just on first impression, almost like an RMR and an SRO had a baby. So it looks pretty interesting, and for 200 bucks, I'm tempted to try one. Now, they are made overseas, but it does have a 3 MOA dot, side-mounted battery. Uh, the footprint of this is a common doctor slash Noblex footprint, and it comes with a Glock MOS plate, but that doctor footprint is the same as like Shield RMS and a few others. Uh, I believe there's a Vortex and maybe a Bushnell or something like that. So it's a, it's a common industry footprint, which is cool. Would it have been cooler if it was like RMR or Delta Point Pro? Because I think those are a little bit more common. Yeah, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, but laying, uh, weighing 1.1 ounces, lifetime guarantee, night vision compatible, hard code anodized, 2032, 40,000 hours battery life. I mean, the specs, I'm not going to lie, uh, they, they look pretty solid. So uh, I, I like what I see as far as all of that stuff. So for 200 bucks, I'm probably going to try to pick one up and check one out. I like that. Uh, in ammunition news, SIG announced a recall on a certain lot number 
of nine millimeter ammunition. So uh, make sure you check SIG's webpage. I'll have a link to the recall in the description below. But if you have a certain SIG nine millimeter handgun ammunition, you should check to make sure if it's this lot number, and then you can contact SIG to participate in the recall. Obviously it always sucks when a company has to uh, have a recall, but it happens sometimes and they would rather err on the side of caution. But basically the recall is for, I believe, squid loads or uh, bad loads. So you could have a squib if you have this, but it is that certain packaging. So if you have some of that that you purchased, make sure you check the lot number. Again, we'll have a link for the full recall in the description below. In firearms news, Smith & Wesson came out with a metal version of the M&P M2.0 9 millimeter handgun. Now, striker fired handguns are super popular, but again, there's a lot of people who are saying, hey, I like the striker fired, but I want something that feels a little bit better, whatever. Well, uh, Smith & Wesson answered that from the factory with this aluminum framed M2.0. It looks really good. Uh, it looks like it has the same ergonomics. It has a grip, uh, basically front strap and a grip back panel, so you can still have that interchangeability, but now it's a more stout aluminum frame. It does weigh a little bit more. MSRP on the M&P metal is 900 bucks. The specs look pretty comparable to you know all the other M&P stuff, but they did post the whole spec sheet there, which I'm putting on the screen for you guys. But uh, $900 for a metal version of the M&P from the factory, factory warranty, all that stuff, no aftermarket. You know, I think it could be interesting. Now, obviously the other big striker fired company is Glock. Now the aftermarket has answered the Glock aluminum metal frame market. I'm actually gonna be doing a video on some Matrix Arms uh, aluminum frames for the Glock platform, which look really, really nice. My unboxing video, which by the way, if you guys aren't subscribing, uh, check out my shorts. A lot of times I put sneak peeks and stuff on there, but they look really good. Uh, so I don't know, what do you guys think? If you're gonna buy a striker fired gun, or is a metal gun something that you'd wanna carry? Is it worth the weight? Is it a range gun for you, a training gun, a match gun? Or if you were to be purchasing a metal gun, would you be purchasing something like a 2011? Which, speaking of which, you might wanna check out the channel tomorrow for some 2011 type news. I think you'll like what you have to see. Some cool stuff, and that's all I'm about to say on that. Let's switch to Precision Rifle here, LaRue has announced their Enhance Siete, and I really hope I'm pronouncing that right. I had to Google what Siete made, and basically I found the definition to be like side facing or something like that, which is kind of cool because this thing really looks like it was uh, developed for maybe certain covert LE operations, military contracts, something like that, but it's basically a breakdown precision rifle. Now, right now they were announced for pre-order at $2,900. That includes the whole folding gun plus an extra barrel. Uh, calibers include 6.5, 308, 22, 250, uh, but not 223 or 300 blackout, which I thought would really kind of be cool in this platform, but it looks really cool. It breaks down into a case. You have the receiver, the scope comes off, the stock folds, it has a handguard that comes off, and then you have kind of this barrel nut that includes this torque wrench. Uh, and again, it all comes with this package, but it looks pretty cool. Now, obviously, questions that I would have is return to zero, is accuracy, consistency, you know, all that other stuff uh, that, you know, you're probably just wanting to know the same amount as I am when it comes to a precision rifle. But LaRue generally makes pretty good stuff. It's generally overbuilt. It's really high quality. Machining is top notch. But it's not cheap at $2,900 for a specialty application like this. But I think it, I think it looks kind of cool and interesting. I, I'm not going to lie. I'd want to check one out. I definitely would want to shoot one. So what do you guys think about that? Let me know. All right, other long guns. Ruger has announced the LC carbine in the 5.7 caliber. Now they have a state compliant model and a standard model. MSRP is $979, so they're definitely not giving it away. But weighing in under 6 pounds... It uses the familiar ergonomic controls as the 5.7 pistol. That 5.7 round is growing. It has a 16 inch barrel that's threaded. I don't know, a little pr uh, critter getter that has a side folding stock, you know, M-lock accessories. Uh, it, it's basically like the, the carbine, the PC carbine thing that they had and their pistol kind of came together because it has like the pistol magazine, the lower, the grip, all that stuff. And like they just kind of made a rifle upper for the pistol. Yeah, it, it definitely looks interesting. I personally don't own a gun in the 5.7 caliber. I think it's cool, but I just don't have a use for it. Between like 22, 22 Magnum, 9 mil, like I just, it doesn't fill a need for me, but I think it is a fun round to shoot. I've shot P90s and stuff like that, and it's, it's fun, but I just don't know if I need it. So I don't know, what are you guys thinking? Are you guys buying something like this? Is this a critter getter for you, whatever? Gotta give a huge shout out to TriggerCon. TriggerCon is coming up in October, October 7th and 8th, 2022. 
outside of Wichita, Kansas at the Flint Oak Hunting Reserve. This is more than a gun show. They'll have live fire demos, they'll have suppressor demos, handgun demos, rifle demos, really cool gun demos, plus non-shooting exhibitors showing off soft goods, accessories, parts, all that cool stuff. It is more than a gun show and it is available to the public. Plus they have a VIP party, which is awesome on Saturday night. But if you guys are anywhere near the Midwest and you want a ticket, hit me up, send me a message to the QA email address, which I'll throw on screen here. But send me a, uh, a link. If you're actually going to go, I have a couple of tickets I can give away for the viewers of this video. If you're interested in that, you can also purchase tickets with the link below. But TriggerCon is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be handing out some swag. So if you go there and you see me, say, hey Dave, and I got a patch for you. I want to help out the viewers, but it is an awesome event. There's over 70 exhibitors that are going to be there and showing off the coolest stuff. Plus, we're going to be giving away the Golden Trigger Award with other media collaborators picking the best of show. And we want to make sure we highlight innovation and cool stuff. So please, if you can make TriggerCon, I think it would be well worth making the trip, especially if you're in the Kansas area, in that Midwest area. It's going to be worth the drive. I think it's gonna be an awesome time. TriggerCon has been one of my favorite shows to attend in the past, and now with the new venue, the new location, uh, after a COVID hiatus, I'm super excited to see it back. So I will be there. I hope to see you guys there as well. All right, moving on to electronics. Kestrel has announced that their shot timer is available finally to order. And I gotta say, this thing looks like a dream shot timer. It has a huge front display. It has a huge top display. So when you're looking at it, you don't have to take it off, which is most shot timers, you have to take them off. Uh, but this thing looks pretty awesome. And you know what? It should be for 300 bucks. Shockproof, water resistant, uh, good clip. You know, it's basically really well built. This is gonna be the pro level shot timer with a five year warranty. And I'm gonna order one. Actually, I'm gonna reach out to see if they'll send me a sample. I'm not gonna lie but I do want to order one regardless because I go through shot timers a lot when I teach classes. I usually travel with at least two because I break them often. They get wet, they get dropped, whatever. And I have one of these that's already dead. This is a CED 7000 that's dead. So that's why I carry a backup. Plus these have a rechargeable battery that, you know, it is what it is. I also did just get the AMG Commander. Uh, and of course I got the neon green, but this thing is supposedly the timer to get it has bluetooth it's durable all that other stuff so i'm going to be playing around with this one more but that kestrel one looks pretty awesome as well and again for 300 bucks it should be because this thing took like four months to get i'm not kidding you. i ordered it in march and i just got it so even probably more than that uh, but yeah this kestrel one looks looks pretty awesome i'm going to check it out do you guys use a shot timer in training if you're not you really really should leave a comment down below if you guys are using a shot timer that's going to do it for this episode of What's Up Wednesday. Again, if you guys like the content, please like, share, subscribe if you want to support it. We'd appreciate it. Uh, at the end of the month, I also do a live QA show. That's the last Monday of the month at 2 p.m. Central, and that is the QA. We go live on YouTube. And if you want to see your uh, question on that, you can email us at the email address shown below, which is the QA at gunsandtactics.com, and I do my best to answer those questions. Plus, we take live comments and stuff like that, too. But a lot of you guys uh, catch up afterwards, so send your questions to the show, whether it's about anything that we talked about on the show, your feedback, whatever. Also, leave a comment. I also love to engage with the comments. I try to reply to as many comments as possible. Thank you guys very much for watching, and have a great day.